<laughs> uh, good morning, commissioners. Uh, my name is Margot Black. I'm an organizer with Portland Tenants United, which uh, is a re registered to lobby with the city of Portland. I'm supposed to say that, right? Um, so before I begin, uh, first uh, I want to thank that uh, Betty was able to take work off to be here to testify, uh, but I want to call your attention to all those who are not able to be here today. Uh, PTU did a lot of outreach to the many tenants who have been impacted by this historic policy, those who've been able to stay in their housing, um, those who've been displaced with dignity, and also those who have been left out with the exemption. Many of these folks wanted to uh, but could not be here today because they are working. They're nurses, they're teachers, they're child care providers, they're bus drivers, uh, they wait tables, they work at Safeway, they have sick kids. Being able to be here on a workday morning is a position of privilege, and I hope that the council realizes what voices are systematically left out in these hearings and how that underrepresentation is institutionalized by staffing commissions and advisory committees without those voices as well. One person who could not be here is Amanda Potter. After 11 years in her Mount Tabor courtyard apartment, her landlord declined to renew her lease, being upfront about wanting to remodel and re-rent for hundreds more. She moved uh, to that apartment with her toddler after her former apartment of 10 years was converted to condos. So she's moved both with and without relocation and would have loved to be here to tell you what a difference it made and also to tell you that even with relocation, she had to move 200 blocks away and her daughter had to start middle school in a new city. And now as a Troutdale resident, she does not have that protection available. And Multnomah County has indicated to Portland Tenants United that it does not want to proceed with a relo policy until Portland has made theirs permanent. Portland's housing crisis doesn't end at our borders. $500 rent, in, 500 rent increases and no cause evictions are becoming epi epidemic in Gresham. Cities and counties across the state need to see Portland demonstrate leadership on this policy by making it permanent today. I'm also here as a member of the Relocation Technical Advisory Committee to urge you to pass the amendment to protect all renters today. I want to remind you what relocation is for. It's not a fee or a fine. It is a real cost. I'm sorry, I'm just going to keep going. Um, <laughs> it's not a fee or a fine. It's a real cost that someone has to pay. If the landlord who chooses to force their tenants out doesn't pay it, then the tenant does, like Betty. It goes to application costs, double rent, security deposits, packing, moving, time off work, and child care for all of the above. Time off work. Moving is expensive and traumatic, regardless of how many units your landlord owns. There are no protections, extra protections, for small tenants. There are no discounts for tenants with small landlords. I'm not here to paint landlords as rich and greedy. I have no doubt that relocation might be a financial burden for some small landlords, but it is no less of a burden for their tenants. I know that they may be using their rental for retirement and to put their kids through college, but renters have kids in college too and may someday want to retire. Our city, state, and country have failed us by tearing up the social safety net, but using renters to make up the difference isn't the answer. Please remember that these small landlords have something that their tenants don't, two homes. They are better off by every single metric than their tenants who own zero, and it makes no sense for the city to prioritize the financial security of those landlords over those with no financial security. Paying relocation will not force these landlords out of their homes and into their cars like the tenants who are denied it. I know you want to defer these questions to the relocation committee, but with all due respect, that's like deferring gun control and health care to Congress. There will not be consensus from a committee comprised of property managers and service providers. I am the only citizen activist on the committee, and only one, I believe, of two renters. But as a member of the committee, I would prefer to approach this question from the perspective of when should there be exemptions, why and what does that process look like, rather than go back to the table with the bias of this hastily thought out exemption to fight about it. Ultimately, we need to try to balance the wish lists of landlords and renters. Oh, we do not need to try to balance the wish lists, but we need to think about the value and purpose of this policy. City Council needs to decide what the value of this policy is and legislate based on that today. The policy isn't meant to punish landlords. It is meant to prevent and mitigate the impacts of displacement. The exemption categorically and unjustifiably leaves out a huge population of renters without asking who those renters are or why they are better equipped to shoulder the burden of this unplanned and unpredictable cost. I'm sorry to interrupt. You're going on five minutes. Are you coming to a conclusion? Yeah, Thanks. I will. What, why don't I just say this, that I, that I did ask that question. Um, we know that the vast majority of unprotected tenants are in single family residences. According to some data I got from Metro yesterday, this is 25% uh, of Metro's, uh, of Portland's renter households. Um, and this, uh, and, and the people who live in the single family residences are people with kids and pets. 
uh, people with disabilities who need the accessibility of homes, seniors and renters doubling up. Um, as Betty stated, this is a business expense. It is reasonable for landlords who are business owners and it must apply to all businesses just like payroll taxes. Make this policy permanent today so renters can live without the anxiety of wondering um, and education begin in earnest and have the courage to legislate on the loophole today rather than hide behind the committee. Protect all renters and close the loophole.